What's going on everybody and welcome to the video. In this one, I wanna do something a little bit different. You know, usually we do talk about individual stocks or things like that, but I kinda of wanted to give you a macro look of everything that's going on in the market just to keep you updated because it is important to understand what is going on all throughout the markets and the economy and things like that. So I'll ask if you do enjoy this type of content, you subscribe to the channel and you turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of my future content, but let's go ahead and get straight into it. So right now, SPY is trading at $387.51. You know, looking at the S&P, it's down pretty flat, you know, 0.08% today. We've got some news to talk about. So first up, let's kind of talk about what happened with Powell talking today. So bonds pair losses during Powell's speech. You know, to give you some overview of everything that happened, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield rose to 3.57% from 3.52% late Monday. And the yield on the two-year tr note recently traded at 4.233 from 4.197. So yields slightly increasing, but prices decreasing. In prepared remarks, Mr. Powell offered no guidance for the U.S. monetary policy outlook, causing bond investors to reverse bets that he might stress a hawkish outlook for upcoming meetings. You know, just the fact that he's not saying too much. But he did also stress the Fed's commitment to reigning in inflation, despite growth risks and potential political pushback. You know, he's kind of at a point where we need to stop inflation, even if it means huge recession, things like that. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now. I also wanted to show you this news. Bank earnings to put U.S. economy under the microscope. America's biggest lenders are expected to post $28 billion in fourth quarter profits, which is down 15% from 2021. So I want to show you a few key charts in this. You know, just looking at this, banks, as we saw, $28 billion in profits for the fourth quarter, down 15%. Profits at the biggest U.S. banks. You can just see the downtrend happening. You know, Morgan Stanley... Goldman Sachs, all these big companies, and they're losing, they're not necessarily losing money, they're making profits, but they're not making as much as they used to, which is a key indicator of maybe some downtimes happening. Looking a little bit more, higher rates have also brought the housing market to standstill by sharply raising the cost to get a mortgage. That has eaten into the fee income that banks earn from home lending after a few blockbuster years during the height of the pandemic. Outlook isn't too bright. You know, here is just kind of the U.S. mortgage originations. 2021 at 4.4 trillion, 2022 to 2.25, then 1.9. And then it slowly starts to increase from 2023, but still nowhere near these 2021 levels. Banks also have stowed tons of excess cash and securities, which has been causing them to lose billions of dollars. JP Morgan took a loss of almost a billion from selling treasuries and mortgage-backed securities in the third quarter. Just here is kind of what they have available for sale. And then that they've held for till maturity. You know, negative 321.5 billion available for sale and held for maturity, negative 368.46 billion. You know, these are pretty big losses when you look at this and this chart does kind of show, just look at the difference from the 2020 levels, 2021, and then 2022. You know, not the best type of stuff that you do want to see. Also, mergers and acquisitions, we've been seeing a lot of less act, uh, activity in this and could be a sign of just slowing down. I mean, we are seeing companies slow down and the economy slowing down just because of higher interest rates and things like that. But I just wanted to give you that outlook. Now, two companies are cutting lots of jobs. First up is Goldman Sachs plans to cut about 3,200 jobs starting this week. You know, just looking at this key highlight, the layoffs amount to nearly 7% of the 49,000 employees of this company as of September. So that is a pretty big drop in employees. You know, it's kind of a big sign, especially with Goldman Sachs being one of the most looked upon uh, investment banks out there. And then we got Coinbase as well. Coinbase Crypto Exchange to cut nearly 1,000 jobs, which is about 20% of its staff. Coinbase will reduce operating expenses by 25% from the previous quarter, including layoffs of about 950 people. At the end of September, it had around 4,700 employees. And then to show you again, sinking stock prices helped push more older Americans back into the workforce. So as we've seen assets fall in value, we've seen the net worth change in American household, you know, the head age of the household. Seeing these drops, I mean, 65 to 74, look at this. Households headed by someone age 55 and older lost an average of $109,000 based on 2019 consumer data. And this is just from January to October of this year, of, of, of last year, 2022. Okay, that's a short amount of time to lose that much money, especially for your average household. That's a lot. Okay, so recent research said that falling asset prices may have led nearly 400,000 American workers, 51 and up, to join the labor force between January and October. And then St. Louis Fed researchers estimate that 36% of the increase in labor force participation during the first 10 months of 2022 was due to rapidly declining asset values. So we're seeing a lot of people getting in the workforce just because they are losing money in their retirement plans and their investments and things like this. So it's causing them to join the labor force again, which is something to keep in mind. But what am I doing with my investments right now? Because we're seeing a lot of 
confusion and a lot of different things in the market. So I think it's important for me to just kind of give you an overview of what I'm doing. But remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Everything I say is not financial advice. Take this for informational and educational purposes only. But here's kind of what I'm doing right now. So I do have a portfolio on M1 Finance, and I also have one on TD Ameritrade. My M1 Finance portfolio is usually, it is just straight up more passive, you know, things like ETFs, uh, some dividend stocks that I find potential in. And so what I'm doing is I am adding to this portfolio during red days and times, you know, I really love M1 Finance just because of the simplicity of it. You know, you can add, let's just say $500 and it'll take that $500 and it'll spread it among your pie where it kind of evenly splits your investments into how much you want it to allocate to them. But it consists of ETFs, dividend stocks that I find potential in, and I'm also reinvesting all these dividends as well. And then in my TD Ameritrade portfolio, I invest in individual stocks that could be seen as a little bit more risky, but stuff that I find a lot of value in. And so I'm adding money to individual stocks that I find margins of safety and, and undervalued. I will give you a little heads up. One of the stocks that I recently bought, I think I bought it like last week, maybe two weeks ago, is Take-Two Interactive, ticker TTWO. Uh, they own a ton of video games like Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption, NBA 2K. And I see a lot of potential coming in with this company, and they do seem to be pretty undervalued at the current time. But also, whenever you invest in a stock, you must believe in that company as well. Don't Please, go, please don't go invest in Take-Two just because I did. Make sure you do your own research. And dollar cost averaging is the best way to make money long term. Okay, I'm dollar cost averaging, making sure I'm putting money in my portfolio, letting my money compound because it is arguably the best way to make money long term. You know, as long as historically speaking, markets do continue to go in that up long uptrend long term. So that is what I'm doing with my investments right now. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of my future content. Thank you for making it to the NS1. Check out M1 Finance for free money, you know, Robinhood, Webull, free stocks down there, get it while you can. And I will see you at the next video.